three action plan. And it sounds very nice, but it was actually about reforestation, what they said. But they were doing it with eucalyptus trees. And they were doing it on community lands. And this was happening in Asia. And many of these communities, they started to complain that these eucalyptus trees, they were planting a lot of them, are causing a lot of problems for us. And so, since then we have started to work on studying the impacts of these plantations with the aim of strengthening, supporting the struggles of communities against these plantations. And in general, yeah, our organization, as Wally said in the very beginning, before not everybody was present, we have a general aim of uh, supporting the struggles of forest people, forest dependent people, to secure their livelihoods against different threats. One of them is the tree plantations. It's a very important threat. But there is also mining going on. They are being constructing hydro dams, uh, roads, uh, industrial agriculture. So that's a bit our work in the south. And as Wally mentioned, in 1998, we decided to launch a permanent international campaign against tree plantations because it was becoming such a huge problem in many countries. So, we have this global plantations campaign until now and I was asked to tell a bit why we are doing this campaign until now and how we are doing it. So, yeah, as I started to mention, why, why are we doing this campaign? Well, communities in many countries, they have lost their lands, they are losing their lands and their livelihoods to industrial tree plantation companies. So we have pulp and paper companies, a lot in Latin America. We have them also here in South Africa. We have a lot of them in Southeast Asia, Indonesia, Thailand. We have also rubber planting and consuming companies like in Liberia, in Africa, in Laos, in Asia. We have oil power companies, mostly concentrated in Indonesia and Malaysia, in Asia, but coming strongly up here in Africa, in many countries, and also in Latin America. And we have a new trend in the last few years, and it is about plantations for pulp, for the rubber plantations, oil palm plantations, and they say now they are also saving the climate, yeah, doing these plantations. And it is about storing carbon in the trees, they say they do. And it is about agrofuels, so planting uh, oil palm to make biofuels, to use as supposed alternative to oil, yeah, to fossil fuel oil. And it's also about planting trees for biomass, like in Brazil, we have now getting, we are getting projects. They are planting eucalyptus trees, and they have a cycle of two years. They cut them, they cut them in pieces, put them in a ship, and send to Europe. And in Europe, in England, for instance, they are building huge mills to burn the wood and generate energy. And they say they are saving the climate. And yeah, continue expanding over the lands of many people many livelihoods in the south. Well, in, the second reason to do this campaign is that industrial tree plant monoculture plantations have been promoted by the FAO, that is an international organization for agriculture, also for forestry, uh, by the governments, yeah, and by corporations as planted forests. They say these tree plantations, they are forests. Now, let's look at this picture, and you can see on the right a monoculture tree plantations. And on the left, like a lot of pictures of forest people, of forest, is this the same? Is this the same thing? Can we call such a tree plantation a forest? Well, Simon. We'll talk more about 
this definition of forest, but I, to explain a bit why this is not about reforestation, if you plant these eucalyptus trees, I suggest we listen a little bit what local people say about these eucalyptus plantations or these oil power plantations or these pine plantations. And so, in Thailand, people call these eucalyptus plantations there, they call eucalyptus the selfish tree. Because eucalyptus picks up all the nutrients in the soil, all the water for the trees, and Thailand is a country where most people, they live from the agriculture. Agriculture is very important, the food production. So they, they have called it a selfish tree. In Chile, in South America, they call it the, the Mapuche Indian, indigenous people, they call them planted soldiers. Because these plantations, the, in, the, in the military dictatorship in Chile, in the 1970s and 80s, the government gave lands, indigenous lands, to three plantation companies. And the Mapuche Indians, they saw them like soldiers, because, and it was dictatorship, because they are green, like a soldier in his uniform, and they are, you know, they are standing in rows, like the soldiers, eh? when they are marching, they are standing in a row, and they are advancing. Eh? The tree plantation were advancing over their lands. In Brazil, the local communities, they call the tree plantations a green desert. And they call it like this because it's lifeless, there's no life inside, no plants, no animals, no water, no food. It's like a desert. In Malaysia, they call the plantations worse than logging. Why worse than logging? Well, they say in their forest, when the logging companies come, they take out the most valuable trees and they go away and they leave the land. When the tree plantation company comes in, they take out the valuable trees, they burn what is left of the forest and they stay and they plant the eucalyptus trees or the acacia trees. In South Africa, people have called the tree plantations the green cancer because it grows in a very uncomfortable way, it just expands, and here you have a lot of invasive plantations where our comrades from South Africa will talk about later. And it's like a cancer, it's destructive for the soil, for the communities, for the land. And maybe summarize this, an indigenous leader from Brazil, he defined eucalyptus plantations like a dead forest that kills everything. So maybe that summarizes very well all these different definitions from different countries, from the communities. A third reason to do this campaign is that these industrial tree plantations, they are very symbolic for the destructive and unjust character, socially, environmentally, economically, of this present capitalist development model that is being imposed yeah, on our people. And it is about continuous growth, expanding. When they build a, a pulp mill in some place and they have like 100,000 hectares to feed that pulp mill, they are already discussing the second pulp mill. Because a company that doesn't grow, it will lose their market space. So their logic is growing, expanding, no limit. It is about maximum profits. So they come to the south, they come to Brazil, they come to Africa, they come to Asia because it's much cheaper. The eucalyptus trees, in seven years you can cut them. And in the north, in Finland or in Sweden, uh, countries with a lot of tree plantations, it takes 60 years. So Stoa Enzo is the second biggest paper pulp company in the world. They are closing down their pulp mills in Finland and they are coming to Brazil and construct a new pulp mill. So the workers in Finland, out of work, they leave the plantations there and they come to the south. It's about profit. It's also very much part of the false solution for the climate crisis. So I was talking about the carbon plantations. They are doing now all power plantations for agrofuels, the biomass plantations. It's a false solution. It's 
making more problems for local people, and it's not solving the climate crisis. We will hear more about that later. And they also say, the company directors, that, well, if you, we need this plantation because we consume paper. Yeah, we need it because they always challenge us. Eh? But where will the paper? You have a lot of paper, this and that. Is this really true? So I want to show you a few figures on paper consumption. In the world, globally, we use 54 kilo per person per year. Taking the whole population of the world and the whole consumption, on average, everybody uses 54 kilo. But in Finland, each person uses, on average, 324 kilo of paper a year. In Brazil, it's 35 kilo. It's 10 times less. In Vietnam, it's 15 kilo. And in Cameroon, in Africa, it's 3 kilo. 3 kilo means 100 times less than in Finland. And then one other feature. In Finland, 99% of the population they, they can read, write. In Vietnam, 93%. While the company directors, they say, the more paper consumption, the more civilized is a society. They say that. Yeah. So here we see there is not actually a relation about alphabetizing the people and the paper consumption. So what is the paper consumption about? Some more features. The paper consumption in the world, it increased five times in the past 50 years. In the United States, more than half of the population, they never read a book again after leaving school. They never read again. <laughs> and they are the biggest paper consumers in the world. Half of the paper consumption is for wrapping paper. So the paper is part of this whole model, this whole industrial food production model, order products producing model, the big supermarkets, the big global transports, north to south, but especially south to north. It's part of the model. And it's, it's not about basic things for which really paper is useful, like books and other things. In the United States, the Post distributes each year 20 billion of propaganda leaflets correspondence. 20 billion. You know this paper with propaganda that most people, they get it and they throw it away. 15% of the paper products are indeed bought by the consumers. So only 15%, 15 we, 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 in fact, we in fact buy, we in fact consume. The rest is part of this, you know, this whole industrial production model built up by the northern industrialized countries and being copied by other countries in the south. So now about how, how do we support the campaign? Uh, of how, do we, how do we carry out the campaign? The most important thing is to support local struggles. So we try to spread information about the impacts of tree plantation, about the local struggles. Uh, we have a, a monthly bulletin it's a space where people can send information about what's going on in their area. Uh, when we receive information, we try to, to network, to bring, to bring the information out, to help communities come out of isolation. Many communities in conflict they are isolated, we don't know about. We try to promote exchange, like we have here a representative of the UNAC, of Mozambique, who will talk afterwards. And we have kind of tried to facilitate the exchange between the people in Mozambique who are being affected now by tree plantations with people in Brazil who are being affected already 40 years by tree plantations. And try to strengthen the struggles in that way and strengthen the solidarity among the communities. We have done a lot of case studies on specific impacts, the impacts on women, the impacts on water, the impacts on work. You can all find it on the website. And we have made specific tools. I would like to show at the end one of these tools. It's like a two minutes animation film about what happens <laughs> if a tree plantation arrives in the community. 
Then we have a permanent campaign towards the FAO especially, but also in general to change the official forest definition. It's very important that we have a definition that excludes industrial tree plantations uh, from being a forest. To, nowadays the forest is defined in a way that also 100,000 hectares of a eucalyptus plantation can be considered as a forest. And if you plant like a thousand hectares of maize or soybean, yeah, that's not a good thing if there was a forest before communities, but if you plant a forest, that sounds good then. So it's for companies very important that they have this definition that they are making propaganda that they are reforest the planet. And the FAO actually says that the deforestation in the world is not that bad because we are reforesting a lot with oil palm plantations, with eucalyptus plantations, acacia plantations, and so on. And it's also, we try to do the campaign struggling against all the greenwash mechanisms that has been set up by the companies to try to respond to all these conflicts, all these struggles of the communities that are saying these, these plantations are bad things, they are destructing our lives. So we have certification, especially the FSC, we've done a lot of work on that. The FSC is certifying industrial tree monocultures as a sustained, sustainable forest, yeah, sustainable managed forest. We have all these corporate social responsibility policies. We have now an initiative of the World, uh, the World Wildlife Fund, WWF. It's called New Generation Plantations. And they do it together with all the big corporations. And the problem is that, you know, all these greenhouse mechanisms, they cannot solve the basic problems. They don't have a solution for the large scale. They don't have a solution for the monoculture. They don't have a solution for the unequal power relations that are happening when a big plantation company comes in a region and starts to donate everything, finance the politicians, directly or indirectly, they change legislation in their favor and so on. And also we struggle against tree plantations as false solutions eh, for the climate crisis, of course. So one last thing I wanted to mention before ending. September 21st um, is the International Day of Struggle Against Industrial Tree Monocultures. So this is a day that was created in 2004 in Brazil by in a meeting of communities affected by the plantations who said, well, we need a national day that we all together say plantations are not forest, and plantations are causing problems, and the pe we, as the people, we want our lands back, we want the plantation companies out, and after one, two years, we picked up this day and suggested an international day and now, yeah, we try to coordinate a little bit and stimulate organizations within our international network to do things on this day, actions. So you can find on our web website, here's the, the page of the website, under Plantations campaign, more information about this international day.